The Most Valuable Rookie Cards, Part 7b. This is the first part of a two-part series discussing inspirational stories in the face of adversity, the Tony Canigliaro Awards, going from 1962 to 210. There's many books written about these different players we're going to talk about, and you will hear their stories. It's inspirational, but also there is some sadness um, to their predicament, but they come out as heroes. So the award was named for Tony Canigliaro, who was an outfielder for the Red Sox. Um, and the award itself uh, is awarded in 1990. And Canigliaro um, was signed with the Red Sox at age 17 in 1962. He made his major league debut in 1964 and one of the players in history to homer as his first at bat. Uh, that year, he broke his arm and toes uh, in August, um, and sidelined him for the rest of the season. But he did bat 290, 24 home runs, and 62 RBIs. So a nice start for a career for this Red Sox. In 1964 and 65, he actually recorded records. Uh, one of them was called I Can't Get Over You, uh, and 45s of that record were available um, for fans of Tony Canigliaro. In 1965, he was the youngest American League home run champ, hit 32 home runs, and was a home run leader in that particular year. In 1967, he was hit in the face by opposing pitcher Jack Hamilton. That hit in the face um, caused him to have serious eye injury, cracked his cheek, and dislocated his jaw at the age of 22. Um, the helmet he was wearing, as all players were wearing at the time, did not have the protective ear flack, which is now standard. So you can see in the picture here of the year that he was hit, he was using the standard helmet. And the new requirement was to have that ear flap. So this injury would not occur again. In 1969, he came back from these injuries, and that year hit 20 home runs and had 82 RBIs. In 1970, he had 36 home runs, 116 RBIs, and played alongside his brother. So the outfield for the uh, Red Sox that year was Billy and Tony Canigliaro. Uh, in 1975, he was forced to retire because uh, of his poor eyesight. Going back to that injury he suffered when he was hit by a pitch. He retired at the young age of 30 years, and his career numbers were a 264 average, 166 total home runs, and 516 RBIs. Uh, in 1982, long a while after he had retired from baseball, he had a heart attack, suffered a stroke, and was in a coma. That coma he was in until 1990, which he never recovered from, and Unfortunately, passed away at a young age. Um, because of his trials and tribulations and courage, the um, Major League Baseball had created a 1990 Tony Canigliaro Award for any player that overcomes obstacles and adversity. And he kind of represents that courage um, to overcome real strife in one's career. And that award is given every year since 1990. You see the award itself and a player we'll talk about later that won that award. In 2007 and 8, the Red Sox dedicated a stands in the stadium called Canigliero's Corner for fans um, that could purchase and sit there. And there were two books that were written um, regarding Tony Canigliaro, one in 1970 and one in 2016. So this is the beginning of an award to players who overcame obstacles and adversities. And we're going to learn over the next two YouTubes exactly what their backgrounds were. So the Tony Canigliaro Award, again, was for overcoming obstacles and adversity. It is selected by an 18-person committee consisting of media members, Major League Baseball executives, Red Sox officials, fan representatives, as well as the Canigliaro brothers, Richie and Billy. So one of the award winners, and remember this was uh, award was 
given in 1990 uh, was a Dickie Thon, a uh, shortstop for the Angels, uh, and played from 1979 to 1992. In 1975, um, he was from Puerto Rico, and he signed as an amateur free agent uh, out of high school. In 1979, he made his uh, National League debut uh, as a second baseman, and in 1983, he was an all-star and a silver slugger. In 1984, he was hit by a pitch in the left eye uh, that was season-ending. Uh, he had problems with depth perception and permanently hampered his potential and his career from then on. In 1991, he was elected to win the Tony Caniglier Award. Uh, he played for several teams and kind of was the ending of his career with the Astros, Padres, Phillies, Rangers, and Brewers, and retired in 1992. And his career stats were 264 average, 71 home runs, and 435 RBIs. Eric Davis, a well-known kind of uh, superstar whose career was unfortunately ended, as we'll discuss, uh, played uh, center field uh, primarily for the Reds. His career lasted from 1984 to 2001. He was drafted in 1980, 20th. Uh, in the draft out of high school. In 1984, at the age of 21, he made his major league debut. He was known for his foot speed, his bat speed, his power, and his defense. Uh, in 1986, he had a memorable fight with Ray Knight. In 1990, he was in the World Series, but unfortunately was injured. In 1994, because of injuries, he retired as a Tiger. But in 1996, um, he got the Comeback Player of the Year. In 1997, he uh, was diagnosed with colon cancer and experienced extreme fatigue. Uh, in 1997, he also received the Roberta Clemente Award and the Tony Canigliero Award. In 1990 book, 1999, a book was written regarding uh, his trials and tribulations called Born to Play. And he had played on the also Dodgers, Tigers, Orioles, Cardinals, and Giants. He retired in 2001 and had three injuries he was battling with, as well as the remission from the cancer. His career was 269 batting average, 282 home runs, 934 RBIs, twice an All-Star, three times Gold Glove, and two times a Silver Slugger. And um, here is his last card that I always recommend to get. It has all of the stats from his entire career on them. 1980 was Jose Rios, um, a right-handed pitcher. He was drafted in 1980, played from 1984-1985, a long pause, comes back in 2001 and 2002. As I said, he was um, 1980. He was part of the amateur free agent because he was in the Dominican Republic uh, at the age of 18 for the Yankees. In 1984, he made his major league debut with the Yankees. In 1986, he was struck out 16 batters, which was a, certainly an accomplishment for any player. In 1990, he was the World Series MVP for the Cincinnati Reds. 1991, he led the NL in winning percentage. Uh, in 1993, he was the AL strikeouts leader. In 1984, he was an all-star. 95 to 2001, he had an elbow injury, which sidelined him for six and a half years and prevented him from appearing in Major League Baseball. And that's that gap between 1995 and 2001 we discussed. 2001, he returned and is the first pitcher ever since uh, 1996, Minnie Minoso, to appear after a Hall of Fame vote was taken. So the vote was already in terms of whether he would make the Hall of Fame because he had been out so long and retired for that uh, period of time. But then he came back and had a comeback, uh, but I retired again soon afterwards uh, in 2002. He did win the Tony Canigliero Award that year. And his career stats were 116 and 91, one loss record, 3.24 earned run average, and 1,606 strikeouts. Brett Saberhagen, a familiar name to most baseball fans, was a right-handed pitcher for the Royals, played from um, 1984 to 1999, and then came back in 2001. 
1982, he was drafted number 479, picked out of high school. He had a blazing fastball and pinpoint control. In 1984, he made his major league debut at the age of 19. He developed a pattern for success on odd number of years. So he would kind of slump in the even years and kind of shine in the um, um, odd number of years. In 1989, an odd number of years, he won the Cy Young, the World Series MVP, Golden Glove, and was the ERA leader. In 1990, he had an even year, and he was out for the rest of the season due to an injury. 1991, he pitches a no-hitter. In 1993, he was caught spraying starch on reporters, for which he apologized and gave a significant amount of money to charity. Uh, 1995 to 1996, he was marred by injuries. And then in 1998, he gets Comeback Player of the Year and Tony Canigliaro Award. In 2000, he missed the entire season, and he played for different teams um, besides the Royals, uh, the Mets, the Rockies, and the Red Sox. And 2001, he attempted a comeback and retired. His career stats are 167 and 17 one loss, 3.34 earned run average, uh, 1,750 strikeouts, three times an All Star, World Series MVP, two times a Cy Young, ERA leader, um, and pitched a no hitter as well as won the Golden Glove. Mark Leiter. Uh, was a right-handed pitcher for the Yankees, a pitch from 1990 to 2001. He was drafted in 1983, number 102 by the Orioles. Uh, in 1990, he made his major league debut as a Yankee. 1994, his nine-month-old son sadly died of a condition called spinal muscular atrophy or Wenig Hoffman's disease. And you can read about it down to a very sad kind of autosomal recessive disease that involves the brain and has several other kind of disheartening symptoms that go with it. Very sad experience for Mark Leiter and his family. But in 1994, he won the Tony Canigliaro Award. He had played for numerous teams, including the Orioles, the Tigers, the Angels, the Giants, the Expos, Phillies, Mariners, and Brewers, were kind of a very much a journeyman as far as his career. He retired in 2001. Um, and what is interesting, in addition to all of these um, experiences, that his brother, Al Leiter, maybe more well-known, played for the Yankees um, in um, 1988 was his rookie card. And then his son, Mark Leiter Jr., um, played, and his rookie card was 2017 uh, with the Phillies. And his nephew, Jack Leiter, just recently um, uh, got drafted in 2021. So kind of a family experience as far as ball playing uh, in the Leiter family. Bo Jackson, um, very popular player for, for many different reasons. Uh, he played uh, 1986 to 1994, was an outfielder uh, primarily for the Kansas City Royals. In 1982, he was uh, uh, drafted in the second round, but denied uh, entering uh, baseball to attend Auburn University. Uh, one of the reasons given, he promised his mom he would be first to go to a major university and his family. Uh, and after he did go into sports, both football and um, baseball, he returned to Auburn University to complete his uh, BS degree in, in family and marriage in the um, uh, human health department there. In um, eight, 1986, he was the 105th draft pick of the Royals um, and um, was given a bonus of $1 million. Uh, 1986, he debuted for the Major League Royals um, after um, he played 56 games. In um, 1987, he was a rookie. So you have his rookie kind of debut card because he only played 65 games in 1986. And then his rookie cards come out in 1987. Uh, and he was kind of an um, interesting character that he actually shot bow and arrow at targets and clubhouses uh, before the games. And today that's kind of his uh, hobby and so forth. And he's um, constantly giving demonstrations in terms of target shooting with arrows and like uh 1989 he was the all-star mvp 
Um, however, as good as he was as hitting on runs and power, he had 171 strikeouts, which tied him for 10th most since um, 1893 in, in total strikeouts. Uh, he uh, also had four consecutive home runs uh, in, a, uh, in 1990. Uh, going on to his career, uh, in 1991, uh, injury ended his football career. So he went out of Auburn, was drafted, uh, played for the Oakland Raiders, um, and had a severe injury to his hip, a uh, condition called avascular necrosis, which is a degenerative disease. So he had a total hip replacement, um, and he was... Um, 1991, he was released by the uh, Royals because he refused to play, uh, to pay for the rehab injury. They refused to pay for the injury. So he went to the White Sox from uh, 1992 to 1994 and the Angels. Uh, 1993, had hip replacement surgery. Um, 1993, he won the Comeback Player of the Year or the also the Tony Canigliere Award. In 1994, he retired at the age of 32. And you can see his uh, career stats, 250, 141 R home runs, 215 RBIs uh, over an eight-year uh, baseball period. And several books have been written uh, about Bo Jackson, um, kind of interesting reads. And certainly there's a lot more to the history of Bo Jackson, not only his football career, but also some of the trials and tribulations in addition to the uh, hip problems that he had uh, in terms of a lisp and education, but turned out to be an incredibly uh, super athlete. Uh, Jim Abbott, um, left-handed pitcher for the Angels. He pitched from 1989 to 1999. And he was born without a right hand, but in spite of that, even fielding was never an issue um, as he learned to uh, adjust to that. In 1988, he won an Olympic gold medal uh, out of the University of Michigan. In 1988, he was the eighth draft pick in the, um, in the amateur draft and was picked up by the Angels. 1989 was his major league debut um, without playing a single minor league game. So he was the last major league player to do so, to kind of go straight into the majors. Uh, he was third that year in Cy Young voting and fifth that year in Rookie of the Year voting. In 1992, he won the Tony Kinnickler Award, again, for overcoming obstacles and adversity and certainly not having a right hand and being a pitcher. Uh, was an obstacle uh, in, the, in regards to fielding, balance, everything else that goes with the uh, proficiency of a pitcher. Uh, in 1993, he actually pitched a no-hitter for the New York Yankees. 98, uh, he went to the Brewers in the National League, and the National League um, pitchers had to bat, so this was kind of a, a new challenge in a sense for him, but he was able to basically get at the plate and and put the effort forward and actually had two hits in 21 at best. You can see some of the pitches, how difficult it is for a person who doesn't have a hand to basically uh, perform this action. Uh, in 1999, he retired as a brewer and his stats were 87 and 108, one loss, 4.25 ERA and 888 strikeouts. Um, Again, an inspiration, and there are books that have been written about him, both in 1995, Nothing to Prove, as well as the 2012 Imperfect. Curtis Pride, an outfielder with the Expos, 1993 to 2006. He was deaf at birth. He had 5% uh, residual hearing and was fluid as a lip reader, but a very difficult situation to put an individual in uh, especially if going to make their career as a baseball player. Uh, 1986, he was a 253rd draft pick of the New York Mets at the age of 17. In 1993, he made his major league debut for the Expos. Uh, he was basically used as a pinch hitter and, and backup outfielder. In 1996, he won the Tony Canigliaro Award. Uh, 1997, he was on the disabled list, yeah, kind of became a journeyman to the Expos, to the Red, Red Sox, Braves, Yankees, Angels, and Tigers. In 2006, he retired as a Tiger with his stats of 250 average, 20 home runs, and 82 RBIs, uh, but certainly considered baseball's greatest deaf player. Uh, Jason Johnson, um, 
was a right-handed pitcher for the Pirates. Uh, he struggled from birth with um, uh, type 1 diabetes, but he was the first major league player to get permission to wear an insulin pump on the field. And you can see that pump basically in his rear uh, left pocket there. Um, he, 1992, he was an undrafted free agent signed out of high school to the Pirates. Uh, in 1997, he made his major league debut with the Pirates, but only played in three games. Uh, then he was drafted in the expansion draft of 1988 to the Devil Rays and um, played, though, for a period of time uh, from 200, 2001, 2003 with the Baltimore Orioles, at which time he received the Tony Canigliaro Award for um, those for his history. Uh, he was kind of a journeyman from the Pirates, the Rays, the Orioles, the Tigers, the Indians, the Red Sox, even when a stint in Japan came back to the Dodgers. Um, and in 2009, his troubles continued. He was diagnosed with choroidal melanoma of the right retina and released from baseball. His final statistics were 56 wins, 100 losses, 4.35 ERA, and 800 and 10 strikeouts. Mike Lowell was a third baseman for the Yankees, played from 1998 to 2010. Uh, he was um, a 1992 48th round draft pick. Uh, he was a Cuban-American and been born in Puerto Rico. But in 1995, he entered the draft again with a 562nd draft pick by the Yankees. Um, 1998, he made his major league debut, but also that year he played in the World Series. 1999, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. He had surgery for that cancer um, and lost two months. Um, in 1999, he won um, playing for the Mariners. Uh, Marlins, he won the Tony Canigliaro Award uh, and played in the 203 World Series and was a 204 Golden Glove a winner. 2003, problems continue. He breaks his hand. But in 2007, he is um, gets his third World Series ring and was the actually the MVP of the World Series. In 2009, he had surgery on his right thumb, retired, and uh, the book was written uh, about him called Deep Drive. His career statistics were 279 batting average, 223 home runs, 952 RBIs, four times an All-Star, Silver Slugger Award, Golden Glove Award, and three World Series. Uh, Freddie Sanchez was the second baseman, third baseman, shortstop, um, played for the Red Sox, um, had a career from 2002 to 2011. Uh, he was pigeon toed. Uh, on his left and had a club foot on his right, which defied walking. So as a from birth, he had difficulty in kind of mobilization, uh, which makes him unlikely to ever play baseball. But uh, in 1996, he was the 30th round Atlanta, and he denied um, going into the draft then. But in 2000, he was the 332nd uh, draft pick of the Red Sox, entered the um, league, and had his major league debut in 2002. In 2003, uh, with the Pirates, uh, this, his injuries made him miss a season and a half, and he was basically put on injured reserves, uh, but came back in 2006, was the National League batting leader, and won the Tony Canigliaro Award. Uh, in 2009, with the Giants, he missed the season due to a shoulder injury. Uh, in 2011, disabled by that shoulder, he retired. His career ending stats um, were 297, 48 home runs, 371 RBIs, three times an All-Star in the World Series in 2010. John Lester was a right left-handed pitcher for the Red Sox, pitched from 2006 to 2017. He was drafted 57th uh, by Boston uh, and given a, a $1 million bonus signing. In 2006, he made his major league debut. That was his rookie season. In 2006, he started having problems uh, with his back due to a car wreck that had occurred previously, but he also uh, was diagnosed as Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
2006, he um, had surgery, but was under chemotherapy and did go into remission. Uh, he also had a problem, which we um, have talked about before, called the yips. Uh, this is problem for him throwing to first base. This is a fielding yip as far as a pitching yip. He just could not get the ball accurately over to first base, which is a problem for a pitcher who wants to uh, keep players um honest and uh, pick them off. Uh, in 2007, he won the Tony Canigliaro Award and returned um, to baseball. In 2008, he actually pitched a no-hitter. 2000, uh, he was in three World Series. In 2007, 2013, 2016 with the Cubs, he played for several teams besides the Red Sox, the Nationals, Cubs, A's, and Cardinals. In 2017, he retired, um, explaining that his body wasn't up for the rigors of baseball anymore. And his career ending stats were one loss record of 217 losses, uh, 366 ERA, 2,488 strikeouts, five all star appearances, a no hitter, uh, the NL wins leader. And he actually, uh, for his career, had 200 wins which is an accomplishment and a milestone. Chad Bettis was a right-handed pitcher for the Rockies, uh, pitched from 2013 to 2019. He was drafted in 2007 by the Astros, but he did not sign uh, and went to Texas Tech, but did play for the USA team. Uh, in 2010, he was drafted again, 76 by the Rockies. Uh, but 212, he missed the season with a shoulder injury. Therefore, 2013, he made his actual major league debut. In uh, 2016, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. He had surgery to have it removed, but it was found to spread. So therefore, he had, had to go under chemotherapy. Um, in 2017, he returned uh, and was a free agent to the Yankees. 2017, he won the Tony Canigliaro Award. And you'll see that two other uh, Colorado Rockies um, during this era also won this same award, and we'll talk about them later. Uh, in 2020, he retired. His career stats were 31 and 31, one loss, 5.12 ERA, and 431 strikeouts. So if you are interested in learning additional information about the baseball card industry, the history of baseball cards, profiting and investing in baseball cards are just ideas to bring fun back into collecting. Be sure to follow us below. Feel free to view our library of YouTube videos and please take a moment to hit the subscription button. Also, check out our eBay store where we have available for sale many of the cards shown in these videos.